Hello there. This is uh, me coming to you from my studio here in La Ciudad de Mexico on Sunday, May 17th, around 12.30. And I have had an entire pot of coffee and I still do not feel awake. I have to say that uh, I feel like I'm doing okay in the quarantine. Um, I've had my moments, obviously, um, and everything but the repetition, the patterns of the days are kind of getting to me a little bit. Um, it was obviously uh, extremely helpful to um, have my little uh, Zoom birthday party on Friday night. Um, and it really was fantastic to um, have friends there um, and to feel supported um, and seen. Um, I think that's a really big issue right now. Um, you know, I, I consider myself a pretty uh, introverted person, but um, uh, the community that, that I've created here um, and all over the world, um, the things that happen in this space um, are essential to uh, my own mental health and to the progress of my own my own uh, artwork and uh, health and everything. So uh, this has been challenging, very very challenging for me. Um, I get frustrated by you know just going out to walk the dog because I see so many examples of people who are not considering the greater community and are acting quite arrogantly and selfishly. Um, but I'm also quite aware that I can't control other people's responses to this. Um, very, very clear, um, as I'm sure we have all become quite aware of the limitations of our own power. Um, I decided I've ha been having trouble uh, writing, um, so I've decided that I'm going to produce some uh, little videos and post them to my Chromatic Explorer and sometimes to my Facebook, depending. Um, I am a little uh, frustrated at these moments. Um, you know, understanding the limitations of people in the streets and how they're going to work with this quarantine and uh, culturally how it's so very different here than it is in the United States and anywhere else in the world. Um, so it's it's been a real challenge. I think it's an opportunity to uh, learn about the expectations that I place on myself and other people and what the, you know, the reality of that is and to try to find some peace within myself. Um, you know, I have fewer flare-ups of anger about it and frustration, um, but they are still there, of course. Um, and then I'm, you know, trying really hard to do things like, uh, uh, you know, get out of bed, <laughs> uh, make food for myself, um, uh, take showers, uh, trim my beard down, um, do those little things that uh, remind me uh, that I'm still here um, and to reach out to people. I did post a message into the virtual residency group this morning because um, there are some people participating in this and then there's a larger number of people who aren't really doing anything. And I understand that, you know, we're all responding differently to what's happening. But I'm also sort of at that tipping point where there are people who are asking for things who aren't adding anything to the community um, other than the things that they're asking for. Um, and then there are people who just are not participating in any way, shape, or form, not replying to messages or anything. And so my impulse is to sort of cut them off and to push them out because not only are they not doing those things, but they're not, um, they're not doing anything to support the community and make sure that it's going to be here. And some of that could just be as simple as liking and sharing things um, or just making a simple donation. So, uh, you know, when I see people making in the group, making extravagant purchases or um, going out of their way, but not able to pay a $12 a month subscription fee or donate $5 to keep the internet or those things going. I don't know. It's been reflected back to me um, that people um, when they receive something for free, they may not value it in the same level. So I am certainly reevaluating um, the model because I had hoped to create sort of a democratic and more um, open model, but I'm also finding that I'm the one putting in all the effort um, and uh, there's not a lot coming back from that. So that's not the um, rule for every person in the group. I, there are a couple people who have been really good 
participants and um, we've been able to do activities with them and then translate those activities into other things. Um, and that's what I imagine for the group. So I feel like I'm sort of at that point where I'm like, okay, well, now it's been two months. Hundreds of hours of work have gone into this. Um, it's not self-supporting. Um, and I need to balance out my, uh, my willingness to continue putting energy into, into um, people, situations that don't reflect my value, uh, values, value, or intention or goal. Um, and I think that has been pretty much the theme of the last couple of years. Um, and I think that accelerated with uh, the events that occurred in Ojai, California with the um, Ojai Unified School District and when I resigned and moved back here. And then I think, you know, I don't know what your belief system is, um, but, you know, I think the, the uh, universe has put things in front of me and opportunities and situations in which I've had to really address things head on and find my way through them. And um, some of these things are like uh, huge spears and I keep having these experiences and knocking away a little and little and then it goes back out and it goes back in, and goes back out a little bit more and it comes back in. Um, so, you know, I'm not a, a linear learner. I never really have been. Um, I'm very experiential and I'm not always willing to hear the message. Um, and sometimes even when I hear the message, uh, I continue to repeat the same things again, and I'm finding that the residency is one of those things that demonstrates back to me um, uh, this idea that uh, you know people are people are you know if someone said to me people tell you who they are um, and you should listen to that, and I agree. Um, I have learned that over and over again, um, and people are telling me who they are. Uh, and I'm not listening as clearly as I need to be listening to. So um, I have evolved and changed and eliminated and built new relationships in the last couple of years that are um, extremely valuable to me and the ones that I've lost um, or evolved into other things. I have mourned and uh, uh, let go of some of those ideas and sometimes they, these people reappear in my life and sometimes uh, um, I'm willing to accept that under new modified um, social distancing, uh, so to speak, as a fantastic metaphor. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just a matter of evolution. So, but really right now, in terms of what's happening in the studio, I've been, I feel like I've been fairly prolific. I think I'm working probably at like maybe 60 to 70 percent of the normal for myself which i think under the situation is pretty good and i i felt like the residency um, was offering a good structure for me to help me maintain my discipline to a point but i've also found that as uh, other events have occurred like the attack from the neighbor next door um, that uh, you know, I, I found myself putting more of myself into the residency because it's task oriented um, than into my work. So um, I've been pulling back from the residency um, to uh, make sure that my my other work, which supports my own mental health and uh, my sense of satisfaction, um, uh, my sense of there being a future. Um, so. So yeah, so I posted a message this morning to the group just, you know, saying, look, you know, this is a community and um, it will thrive or fall apart based on the participation of, of the community. So if really, genuinely, if this is not working for you and you are not ready to ask for something um, and you're not willing to even do the bare minimum of supporting the community by sharing your experiences, sharing the content that's being created, um, liking it, uh, making a donation. Um, you know, there's so many different ways to show your support, but if the community itself isn't willing to uh, 
um, participate, then I need to make the community smaller and find people who are, uh, because I, I, I just, you know, it's just like teaching. Um, you create all these opportunities and, you know, only a certain percentage will take advantage of it. But in this particular context, uh, I'm not required to let 35 uh, students in the door at a time and create those opportunities endlessly um, and hope that they participate. Um, at this point, it's like, if you're not going to participate, then you're not going to be a part of the group. And when you're ready to participate, you can come back and apply again. Um, and uh, so I'm, I'm drawing that line in the sand this week. I, you know, and I'll be reaching out to um, the artists in residency and challenging them to participate. And if they're not willing to, then that's fine too. Um, but, uh, and then the ones who are, you know, I'll continue highlighting and building content with them, um, with their participation and, you know, do more. And then in terms of what's happening in the studio, I, you know, I'm really having to learn to be very gentle with myself about this because I've had days of high functionality and I've had days uh, of, you know, almost zero functionality. Um, and it seems like it's taking longer to get the momentum going in the days uh, without all the um, social interaction and things. So I'm, I'm really struggling right now um, to kind of maintain my, my grasp on uh, the reality of things. Um, I'm fortunate that I was able to pay rent um, this last week um, from uh, some art sales and some work that I've taken on and um, there's a little bit of future income. Uh, you know, there's, I'm in a pause right now with my immigration status uh, because the lawyer is not working. Um, I'm technically, uh, my tourist visa is expired but uh, I don't know that anybody could not be forgiving of that in the current situation. Um, and I'm certainly not going to travel um, in, the, in this time as well. Um, so there, you know, there's a lot of things that are kind of up in the air um, and they're all in the future. And so every day I'm just trying to concentrate on what it is I can do to make that day function. But I found myself this morning like waking up thinking, I can't keep repeating the same days over and over again. I can't keep living a Groundhog Day and trying to force myself through the day, uh, trying to find my way um, to the next thing, uh, to go down a checklist of things uh, that make me feel like the days had, you know, the necessary uh, quality of activities or meanings that it needs to have. Um, it's just, you know, it is what it is, and we're all going through this together, so. Um, I'm really, really hoping uh, that um, that uh, things improve, um, and uh, I'm just super grateful for the support that I've received from family and friends. And uh, I keep trying to focus on the things that I'm grateful for. Um, and uh, yeah, that's kind of where it's at right now. Um, you know, I have all these semillas in process. There's probably at least 10 more waiting to be done. Um, there's at least three larger compositions uh, in different phases of the process. Um, and, uh, you know, things keep pumping along. And I feel like, you know, by the end of June, there'll be enough, uh, enough uh, pieces to uh, start thinking about how the show will come together, um, the presumed show for, for the uh, fall, which who knows if that will happen in terms of my, my exhibition for my own work. Um, and then there's the whole ideal of the queer art exhibit and the complications that have arisen as a result of the quarantine and finances and things. And so, you know, we're kind of evolving and trying to, I'm trying to figure out creative ways to uh, put this exhibition up um, and make sure that it represents the ideals that I um, originated with and it is evolved with the, the themes of what's currently happening as well. Um, so it's complicated. <laughs> it's extremely complicated and the show is like what one, two, three, four, four months away and uh, we will need every moment of those four months to make it work because there's no way of knowing when we get to October um, what the situation is going to be and if people are going to be able or willing to attend the show. So 
um, my design of the show is about social distancing and creating that safety for, for the viewer. Um, but it's also about creating it so that it can be seen in a, offline um, and that it, it uh, maintains a level of quality um, that it's complete in a way because when you have an experience of a show in a gallery or a museum, um, you have that relationship between you and the artwork when you see it personally. And um, I've always felt that there are, there are things missing from that relationship that could augment it based on the desire of the person to interact with other materials. So like a, the videos of artist interviews that I've been producing and all these different things, these are all elements for that show in October. Um, and with the ideal that the, the book published and everything, all these elements come together um, with the videos intact and all these sort of stories. And I think that's the thing that's a, uh, emerging from this is that uh, it's, it's a, I don't want to say an encyclopedia of stories, but maybe um, a, a compilation of stories about the queer experience. Um, and so, those stories, I think, need to be heard and um, they need to be uh, amplified. And um, and I think it's it's a worthwhile and meaningful project. I, I get nervous because the show is in October um, with my immigration status and the conditions of the world. I don't know if I'm gonna have to return to the United States. Um, I don't know what's gonna happen here. Um, to be honest, I, I really don't, I don't have any faith in the Mexican government. They haven't demonstrated anything that makes me feel confident in the way that it's being handled. Um, I mean, I think there are good things and there are bad things, and I think that could be said about almost any country in the world right now. Um, but uh, it is very complicated to live in a different culture um, and have expectations <laughs> because uh, that's, that's uh, maddening. Um, and um, they're not going to meet those expectations, of course. Um, but I do worry about safety. Um, I mean, I've been mugged once and attacked by my neighbor once, and we've been in this for eight weeks now. Um, and uh, I've become more vigilant and more scared about going outside um, based on the things that I'm seeing. You see me post, you know, images of the freezer truck at the funeral home. Um, you know, there's a protest on the street behind me um, where no precautions are really being taken other than they block the street off, um, which is normal anyway, so that's not any different. Um, there are all these examples of things that could raise my anxiety about feeling secure about living here, but there aren't many. Um, I don't see any opportunities arising for me to move back to the United States. Um, there's not a artistic community for me to join. Um, there's no job that meets the um, requirements that I would have for it in order to maintain my studio practice and balance my life. Um, and, uh, you know, and primarily most of my physical community is here. Um, I've, you know, and, and my life, my studio and everything is here. Um, my dog is here. My, my artwork is here and the idea of like having to walk away from you know things are things um, my dog is not a thing my dog is uh, my my love um, my artwork is my love I don't want to leave that behind so if I can't find a way to return um, with my artwork and my dog um, and uh, a, sort of a pathway for me to follow then I'm not really interested in doing that and it's a very very difficult decision to make so I don't, I felt compelled to, you know, I'm not getting any like really one-on-one -on -one time. Um, uh, and I, I need to start getting these things out of my head and on, onto a surface as it were um, out there. So thank you for listening to this. Uh, it's very layered and detailed and probably a little bit longer than you wanted to spend staring at a screen as we're all just staring at screens these days. Um, but I appreciate your um, support, your um, your uh, attention, and um, I hope that we 
are able to connect one-on-one -on -one and face-to-face -face sometime soon. Who knows?